Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on genetic engineering. Previously, we discussed DNA replication. In today's lesson, we will talk about the importance of genetic engineering in different fields, including medicine, agriculture, and criminology. We have a lot to cover in this lesson, so let us begin. The term clone can be applied to entire organisms as well as to genes. A clone of organisms is a group of organisms produced asexually from one parent. Each member of the group is identical to one another, as well as to the parent. Plants produced from cuttings are a good example of clones. This involves cutting off a piece of a plant's stem and planting it in fertile soil. In a few weeks, if it is well watered, the stem will develop its own root system and it will become an independent plant. This method of cloning plants has been practiced for thousands of years. However, recently a more efficient method has been developed called micropropagation. Micropropagation is when a tiny section is taken from the growing point of a plant shoot and is grown, subdivided, and put into many test tubes. The test tubes contain nutrients and hormones to encourage root growth. The specimens are then transferred to other test tubes containing hormones that promote shoot growth. When the plants have grown big enough, they are planted in compost. Students, why do you think micropropagation has become such a common method of producing plants? Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. I am sure that you came up with some great reasons as to why micropropagation has become an important method of producing plants. Since the parts of a parent plant can be split into an infinite number of clones, this method allows for very large quantities of plant production. This means that more plants can be produced in a shorter time. Using micropropagation also allows for the production of large quantities of virus-free plant stock. If your answers were similar, then you are correct. Great work! While cloning plants is a relatively simple procedure, it is not quite as simple to clone animals. Students, have you ever heard of Dolly the sheep? She was the first cloned mammal. Dolly was produced by Scottish scientists. They transferred a diploid nucleus to an egg cell that had its nucleus removed. Once the nucleus had been transferred, the egg cell was stimulated with a small electric current in order to promote division. When the development of the cell reached a stage known as blastocyst, the embryo was implanted into a surrogate mother ewe. Dolly was born seven months later, and she was genetically identical to the ewe from which her genetic material had been obtained. What is genetic engineering? It is a process in which the genome of an organism is altered, usually by having an extra gene from a different organism added. When genetic engineering first began, a lot of work was done to modify bacteria so as to get useful products. This enabled the creation of insulin which has been incredibly useful in the field of medicine. Bacteria have also been modified to produce vaccines, enzyme used in the food industry, and bovine somatotropin. Bovine somatotropin helps to increase the amount of milk yielded by cattle and it increases the cattle's muscle mass. Plants and animals are most often cloned for the purpose of creating a larger yield of crop plant or animal stock. This has been very beneficial for agriculture. Students, what are some of the benefits of genetic engineering? Brainstorm some ideas with a partner, and I will see you in a few minutes. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Hello again, students. I wonder how many benefits you were able to think of. Genetic engineering can be used to detect hereditary diseases in people, plants, and animals. It can be used to prevent infectious diseases by implanting the genes that code for antiviral proteins specific to each antigen. Genetic engineering can be used to engineer disease-free plants and animals with an increased growth rate. This would reduce the use of fertilizers and pesticides and increase the amount of food available to people in need. Genetic engineering can also be used to increase genetic diversity by producing a greater variety of alleles that can be implanted in other species. For example, wheat plants could be genetically modified to produce insulin. I am sure you thought of many other great benefits as well. Did you know that gene technology can be used in forensic science? I am sure you know that fingerprints have been used for many years to identify suspects at the scene of a crime. Genetic fingerprinting is another method that can be used, although it has nothing to do with actual fingerprints. Genetic fingerprinting is a technique for comparing the DNA of different people. There is about a one in one million chance that another person will have the same DNA as you. This makes DNA useful for identifying crime suspects. Forensic scientists can take DNA obtained from a sample of blood, skin, or semen that is found at the scene of a crime. This is known as non-coding DNA. It is found between genes and it contains repeating base sequences that form your genetic fingerprint which are called mini-satellites. Today, we discussed genetic engineering, including the cloning of plants and animals, and the different uses and advantages of genetic engineering in fields such as agriculture, medicine, and forensic science. This is the end of our lesson. Until next time, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.